What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to go over 25 bodybuilding or lifting terms that I think you should know. This video will be especially helpful for beginners, those just starting their journey into weightlifting. Um, if you could find these terms online really easily, you just Google it. But I thought, why not put together a video where it has all the terms in one place, and I'll also do some demonstrations for you too so you can see what I mean. So without further ado, here we go. All right, so the first term is reps. Reps stands for the amount of times you perform exercise within one set. So for example, if I'm doing bicep curls and I do five bicep curls, that is five reps. Which has into the next thing, which is sets. Now sets, that's the amount of times you perform an exercise with a predetermined amount of reps. So for example, I'm gonna do two sets of five repetitions for bicep curls. That's two terms and how they sync together. Next up is going to be drop sets. And for this one, we'll do a demonstration video after I go over the definition. But a drop set is when you finish a set of any given exercise and then immediately after, drop 20 to 30% of the weight. So if you're doing free weights, you'll actually have to get up, take some of the weights off to you weight to 20 to 30%, and then you immediately go back and do another set to failure. Alright, so this is going to be the example for a drop set. We have 40 pound dumbbells. We're going to do a couple reps. We're going to set these down and we're going to pick up the 30s right after. So, here we go. Let's go. One, two. Oh man, I'm so gassed. Toss these down. Immediately jump over to your 30s and go to failure again. Okay, so as you guys just saw, that is what a drop set looks like. Next thing we have is going to be a rest pause. So a rest pause is when you finish a set, you wait 15 seconds, so count out 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, all the way up to 15, and then you do a set again with the same amount of weight, and you take it to failure. So you'll see a lot of programs call for either drop sets or rest pauses to overload your muscles and just get them working in ways they haven't before. So instead of just doing your cookie cutter X amount of reps for X amount of sets, nothing special, this way you're tossing in a little bit more, you're shocking the body, and you'll be surprised at uh, how you do with those sets. So I'll give you an example of the drops, sorry, rest pauses here. All right, so literally continue right after that drop sets. So let's say I do another set with the 40s. So gassed again. <sighs> so I'm gonna set these down. I'm gonna wait 15 seconds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Don't actually count that fast. Count 15 real seconds. Time for the next portion of the set. That's the drop set. But I'd be taking that to failure again. So gassed. Alright, so don't mind me if I keep looking at my list. I don't know what order I have things in, and I, I mean, 25 terms is a lot to remember. I know what all of them mean, but I have to refer to the list just to see what the next ones are. So the next two, though, are going to be supersets and giant sets. So a superset is when you combine two exercises with no rest. For example, I'm going to do a flat barbell bench press. As soon as I finish that set, I'm going to run over and do a barbell row. I'm going to do them back to back. After that is when I'll take my rest. You typically do supersets with opposing muscle groups, in this case, chest, and then back. The next thing is gonna be a giant set. Very close to a superset of giant set is when you do three or more exercises with no rest. So we'll use the superset as an example. Do a flat barbell bench, barbell row, and then let's say that we just do a barbell squat. So in this case, we're doing chest, back, legs, Boom, 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 and then you rest. So I'll show you an example of that here. This next one is gonna be a superset and a giant set. So I'm gonna do them both in this one take. Um, I'll, I'll stop and show you what I mean. So for the superset purposes, we are going to do a barbell flat bench, followed by some dumbbell, bar, dumbbell rows. And then for the giant set, I'm just gonna do a goblet squat. I don't wanna have to move the barbell around and take up so much time, so here we go. We'll get our set of bench press in. Done. 
Now without rest, we're gonna jump over to do some dumbbell rows. All right, so that's a super set. Now if you were doing a giant set, you would also incorporate some goblet squats on top of that. So, this would be the giant set. It's also doing some squats after doing the barbell flat bench and the dumbbell row. And that is your superset and giant set. Okay, so this next one is hypertrophy. I'm gonna read off my list here because how I think of hypertrophy and what the actual definition is are similar, but it's just best if I read it off the list. So the definition of hypertrophy is enlargement of an organ or tissue. So in this case, enlargement of the mus muscles. So you'll see a lot of programs call for hypertrophy. What that basically means is you're typically doing eight to 12 reps of exercise with say 70 to 75% of your one rep max. We'll go over what a one rep max is in a little bit, but hypertrophy in short is how you grow your muscles. When lifters say you wanna work in the hypertrophy range, that's to typically grow your muscles, as opposed to the strength training range, which is lower reps. Strength training is typically three to five reps per set, and you're doing a higher percentage of your one rep max. In this case, you're doing anywhere from say 80% to 90% of your one rep max. Um, the reason you're doing this is you're lifting a lot more weight. It's a lot more strenuous on the body, but you're getting your body accustomed to that higher weight so that'll help increase your one rep max, which in essence makes you stronger. It will still help your muscles grow, of course, but the best way for muscle growth is gonna be doing the hypertrophy range, which is of course the eight to 12 rep range with lower percentage of your one rep max. Hope that makes sense. If you want me to clarify that one some more, just ask me in the comments and I'll be happy to go over it with you. All right, next up we have ATG. So this one is gonna to refer to squats. It stands for ass to grass. Um, typically when you squat, you get a lot of quarter squatters. You'll, I'm sure you'll see a whole bunch of videos on that if you just Google it or type it into YouTube. But ADG is what uh, bodybuilder, lifter, power lifter, that's how they're gonna squat. So that means that you're going below parallel in your squat. Your thighs are going parallel or just below. You're not doing a half range of motion. I'll have to show you what I mean with that. However, I will say some people have knee problems or lower back problems or just overall mobility problems and they might have problems going parallel or all the way past the grass. In which case, that's fine. I would say just work on your mobility so you can increase the range of motion for your squat, but that's what ATG means. I'll show you a demonstration of that too. We'll go ahead and do some squats and just show you what I mean with that. Next up is DOMS, D-O-M-S, stands for delayed onset muscle soreness. What that means is, for example, if I work out chest today, that I might not necessarily feel sore on my chest tomorrow. Instead, I might feel sore on my chest the following day, where I can't even give a hug because my pecs are hurting, you know, especially if I did some really deep flies. <laughs> but what I wrote here to mention is that you'll typically feel doms with your legs. Like literally, you can work out your legs say on Monday, and you'll, you'll think you're fine, wake up on Tuesday, no problem, and then you go to go upstairs on Wednesday morning or even Thursday, and you're like, holy hell, I can't move. That's how you know what doms are, okay. This next one is gonna be the squat demonstration of ATG, or ass to grass. So I'm gonna show you different levels of depth. So actually, if you can come stand over here, so you can kind of see where my legs break. So this first one is gonna be going all the way, ass to grass. You'll see my legs broke parallel and my butt is as close to the ground as I can get it. Now the next thing we'll do is just a parallel squat. So you'll see my legs are parallel with my knees. That's parallel, back up. Some people again have the mobility issues, so you might see them doing something like that. If that's the case for you, I recommend working on your mobility 
So you can at least break parallel or just get right at parallel and that'll be a full range of motion squat. Okay, next one is a sheet rep. So you'll see this in some programs too. You might even do these already, probably do. So a sheet rep is when you sheet on the repetition to get a full range of motion. For example, if I'm doing a bicep curl with the barbell and you know, I'm just, oh man, I'm fatigued. And then I start swinging my body into it to get that full range of motion. That's what a cheat rep is. Believe it or not, it actually does have its place in bodybuilding and powerlifting. It can help you get past plateaus and really just make you stronger and really induce that hypertrophy range because you are still using the primary muscle group for the exercise. You're just incorporating some help from other body parts. Next up is going to be concentric. So this is the standard way that we do most lifts. Again, I'm going to use the bicep curl example. So concentric is just it's essentially the upward portion of your bicep curl, which leads to the next term, which is eccentric. Eccentric is the negative or the reverse of concentric is how I think of it. So instead of just doing my curls, what an eccentric movement is, I'm gonna do my curl and then I'm gonna focus on the descent of the weight. I'm gonna really make that take three to five seconds on the weight down. And I will show you an example of this one, show you what I mean. Um, let me see, did I leave any other note there? No, I didn't. Uh, so this is gonna be a demonstration of sheet rep. So I'm gonna do some bicep curls, barbell. Once I get tired and really fatigued, to get past my uh, sticking point, let's say that I cranked out eight reps and you know I'm totally worn out and I wanna get two more, I'm gonna toss my body into it. Uh, just a bit. That's a cheat rep. So next up is gonna be an eccentric movement. So instead of just you know doing my typical bicep curls, I'm gonna go up and I'm really gonna focus on the descent. And that is gonna be an eccentric movement with the bicep curl. So next up is gonna be a nutrition term. It's gonna be macro and micronutrients. So broken down, dumb talk here, macronutrients is essentially your fats, protein, and your carbohydrate intake. Most diets will give you a predetermined amount of macros based on your weight, your height, your age. It'll say 75 grams of fat, 300 carbs, 200 grams of protein, and those will be the macros that you wanna try and hit every day. The counterparts to that, or the partner, is micronutrients. What that is, that's your vitamins, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way through Z, double Z, um, your zinc, your copper, magnesium. That's what your micronutrients are. So you'll see most diets call for a huge focus on your macronutrients, because those are the big ones that are really gonna help you either lose weight or gain weight in a good way. Right, it's getting a little hot in here. I'm in California and it's like 102, 103 degrees. Air is on, but I'm starting to sweat. Anyways, number 16, here we go. So, tempo. That's the rate that you perform an exercise. Um, this is where you're gonna really focus on the concentric and eccentric movements. So, instead of just going bicep curl it up, I know, I love using the bicep curl example. I just can't help, it's the easiest thing. So instead of just going boom, boom, you're gonna take it slow and slow. Varying your tempo is another great way to break past plateaus, switch things up, and really just break past any sticking points you might have. Next up, this is gonna be a fun one. It's gonna be Olympic versus standard lifting equipment. So in short, Olympic lifting equipment refers to your barbells, your weight plates. Olympic is what you'll find in most gyms, and what I'd say most fitness equipment out there is. So Olympic equipment is Weight plates have a two inch diameter for the barbell, and the barbells are seven feet long, seven feet wide, and they typically weigh 45 pounds. Whereas standard equipment, typically the weight plates have a one inch diameter, their barbells are anywhere from five to six feet, and they could weigh anywhere, anywhere from 25 to 35 pounds. All right. Next step, number 18, we have assisted reps. So this is when you're taking an exercise to failure, but you're then having a partner help you get past that failure so you can crank out some more reps 
while maintaining good form and you'll be able to go a little bit heavier while still hitting a predetermined amount of reps. For this one, I am gonna show you a demonstration which you can check out here. Okay, so this one is going to be an assisted rep. So again, we're gonna do a bicep curl example. Let's say that I just did 12 reps, super tired, and my partner, who is recording this, is gonna help me get past failure. So I'm gonna go right up here. Oh, I need help here. They're gonna help you lift it up the rest of the way for just a couple more reps. And that's an assisted rep. All right guys, so we're gonna crank out these last six pretty quick. There will be some breaks in between the six so you can see demonstrations of some in here. But here we go. So number 19 is failure. Pretty simple, that's when you're taking an exercise to failure. You cannot possibly lift the weight anymore. So in this case, I'll use bench press. Say you bench 10 reps and you just know, if you go for that 11th rep, you're gonna have to have someone curl that barbell off you. That is taking an exercise to failure. Next up is gonna be compound. So essentially a compound exercise or a compound movement is any exercise that works two or more body parts. So in this case, we'll say your um, bench press, squat, and deadlift. Those are the main compound exercises. Those three exercises are what most beginner programs call for because they can really, they really do work just about every single muscle in your body, especially once you learn the mind-muscle connection and you get the proper form locked in, you'll realize that even doing something like bench press, you use your feet. It's called a heel drive. Isolation. This one's pretty easy. So an isolation exercise is when you're doing any exercise that's only working one muscle group. So let me see, I think I wrote an example here. Ah, front uh, deltoid raise. You're really only working the front portion of your deltoid. So I'll show you an example of that too. Uh, free weights. Free weights are exactly what they sound like. It's weights not attached to anything, they're free. <laughs> so in this case, so we're talking about dumbbells, kettlebell, kettlebell balls, and um, just weight plates. Anything that's not a machine is considered a free weight. So you'll see there are some free weight exercises and some machine assisted exercises. Next up is negative reps. So negative reps is essentially your eccentric versus concentric movement concentration. So for example, when you're doing bench press, instead of just focusing on pure tempo, you're only focusing on the descent of the bench press, the barbell. So when you're doing it, really just focus on a slow, controlled descent. And in this, you'll actually want to use a weight that's maybe a little bit heavier than what you normally do. Um, 95, to maybe even exactly at your one rep max, or even over it. For this though, you definitely need a partner. The goal here is to control the descent as low as possible have a partner help lift it back up and do it again. You're only focusing on the negative portion, the eccentric portion of it. One rep max, ORM. So that's exactly what it sounds like. It is the maximum amount of weight you can move for each exercise. It's really important to determine your proper one rep max and to constantly test your one rep max every couple of months that way you can base your percentages for hypertrophy and strength training appropriately. So for example, my one rep max squat is 435. So working off that, when I'm going for hypertrophy, I'll take 70% of that and just do some reps with that. Or if I'm doing strength training, I'll work closer to 85% of that with the three to five rep range. Finally, we have partial reps. So this is exactly what it sounds like. You're doing an exercise without full range of motion. Great example of this one is gonna be 21s, which is, you can really incorporate it for any body part. I'm more familiar with doing it with bicep curls. So I'll show you an example of that and we'll wrap the video up. Thank you for watching. All right, almost done. So this one is a negative rep. I don't have a partner that can help me demonstrate this, so I'm just gonna stick with the one plate on each side. But without further ado, Negative rep, remember, is really just focusing on the descent, more so than the actual pushing up. So let's just imagine this is a three plate bench. I'm gonna go up, slowly, 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 slowly control that descent. 
Now let's say that I cannot put it back up. Just imagine I do have a partner here with me. Help me get it back up. And I'm gonna do another rep, just focusing on the descent. Partner's gonna help me get it back up. And then again, on the descent. I don't recommend doing too many reps with negative reps, especially with heavy bench, because if your partner's biceps aren't up to par, he's gonna fail and he's gonna drop it on you and you already know you can't lift it, so you'll be SOL. That one stands for shit out of luck. Okay. So this is gonna be a partial range of motion. To demonstrate that, I'm gonna do some bicep curls, uh, doing 21s. So what that is, you do a partial movement for seven reps, then you do the next part of the movement for seven reps, and then you do the complete movement for seven reps. So for example, if I'm doing 21s, I'm gonna go one, two, let's say I did seven. Next up, I'm gonna go one, two, Say I did seven, now I'm gonna do the full thing. Two. Really what I'm trying to show you though is that this is a partial rep. I'm not doing a full bicep curl. I'm literally going about halfway and then back down. That's a partial rep. And that is the video. Thank you all so much, especially for those of you that went the whole 25 terms with me. Really appreciate it. Um, I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe, and let me know what you'd like to see next. All right? Have a great day.